ANC Chief Whip Penny Majudina has lashed out at the ANC Member of Parliament Nkosasa Natlamini Zuma for failing to attend a sitting in the National Assembly yesterday without providing a reason. MPs were voting on the removal of Advocate Busitu M. Kwebane as public protector after an inquiry into her fitness to hold office said she was incompetent and was guilty of misconduct. Well, President Sora Maposa is expected to receive a letter from the Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosivir Mapisa Nakula, which will then seal Mkwebane's fate. Majodina is now calling on the ANC to act against Lamini Zuma. Her absence today was a shock to me. She has no apology. She has no permission to be absent. I can account about others. I know their whereabouts. I don't know the whereabouts of Mamanko Sasa and Lamini Zuma. And as I usually do, I'm packaging the report to the Secretary General's office, it's high time that they act once and for all. It's enough now. Let's talk more about those comments now. Bring in political analyst and WITS governance professor Susan Boyson. A very good evening to you, Professor. I'm grateful for your time. Does the ANC caucus in Parliament have an NDZ problem? Um, well, it seems like there is a problem with discipline and ability to exercise authority over all of their MPs. We know Minister Nkosazana Lamini Zuma is an old hand at this. Um, she had also done a similar trick in December, middle December 2022, last year, when it came to the Pala Pala Commission of Inquiry, whether there may be a case to investigate against Sarah Ramposa in Parliament last year, and she then she and, and three other MPs um, decided to, say, to vote against the ANC line, arguing at that time that there wasn't official line because a certain NEC meeting had been ended before prematurely, and so they used that as a technical escape avenue. And we know whether that was, we don't know in the first place whether that was accepted by the ANC or not, but we know that seemingly nothing much happens mm -hmm. if that kind of in ill discipline, lack of discipline is manifested in the ANC. So that is a very interesting case. Perhaps Minister Damini Zuma just reckons it's fine to do as she likes to go against her party because nothing will happen. And are the two actions the same, her defying the party line basically on the Palapala Pala vote and voting for its adoption, in fact, and then yesterday not being in Parliament? And I must caveat that by saying at this stage, we've not heard of any reason why she was not in the House. What we have is the word of the ANC chief of Penima Jodina, who says she was not given any reason as to why the minister would not have been in Parliament yesterday. Yes, indeed, indeed. And the chief whip had, had a very strong line on this. And the chief whip, Demi Majudina, also said that she knew about all the other non not present ANC MPs, and but but that she had not had similar explanation from Minister Lamini Zuma. So that certainly is, is a is a reflection on the ANC, whatever line it endorses, whatever it decides to vote on, one expects that political parties, either MPs are elected on that party's ticket, will have that kind of authority to exercise over, over their MPs. Mm. Is she above reproach because of her, her veteran status, shall we say, in the National Assembly and in Cabinet, even her profile within the ANC. I mean, she was a challenger even for the presidency of the party at some point. And one would have to wonder, earlier you said there'd be no consequences. You wonder why it is that there hasn't been any sort of, shall we say, quote-unquote, harsh action taken post the Palapala Pala vote and whether her position will basically mean the party won't do anything even this time. You know, it certainly seems as if she believes now there will be no consequences and nothing will happen to her this time around either. We know she has been forgiven, forgiven, maybe in quotation marks, quite a few things in the past, where she has run a very strong, very critical campaign for the president's, presidency of the ANC. And said that we know that 
yeah, those campaigns come with all kinds of ammunition being fired in all directions. But that was taken in the spirit of campaigning. And we know by, that by the positions she has been occupying in President Ramaphosa's cabinet, those are senior positions in which she, in, in latter times, does not seem to have been performing terribly well. She was Minister of Cocta, first uh, was Minister of Planning in the presidency, then Minister of Cocta, overseeing the COVID-19 regime. And the measures that were taken there didn't do very well there, but was seemingly accepted as having rendered efficient behavior. And now in the minister, in the, as minister in the presidency responsible for women, youth, and people with disabilities, um, she seems not to be f performing really well. We don't see her even in a much required uh, portfolio such as women and youth. And it, it seems to me that anything goes as far as she concerns. she's concerned. Mm -hmm. And she certainly, that is, that is the aura she is giving out. We also know, quite interestingly, I, I recall after last year's ANC elections, a few, the, literally a few days after the Palapala Pala vote in Parliament, at the Nasri conference venue at the ANC, she said that the leadership has been elected. That was Cyril Ramaphosa then as president, re-elected at the ANC. And um, under the Palapala cloud, if I can call it that, and she said then that we have to accept these leaders that ANC has chosen. But now, a few months later, seemingly again on Palapala grounds, because that's been the major point of criticism, against uh, on why the vote shouldn't go in a certain direction for the ANC, um, is that she fell so away clear to again oppose the ANC on action against, in the, this time around, against yeah. the former or the outgoing public protector. So there's a, I, I see quite a bit of inconsistency there. I see her believing that not much will happen to her. Professor Susan Boyson, good to speak to you on this issue tonight. Thank you for your time on News of Prime.